Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead, let's do another entry here. This time I delved into the past for one of your past suggestions. Not too far back though, this was about maybe six months or so ago. And it has to do with a suggestion that seems to mimic one that I've done before in the past. In fact, one of my more popular videos pretty much ever. I can't think of another one that has more views. It was the Ninjin, which I created a couple of years back, about three or so years or so back. Over 200,000 views on that one. So amazing, absolutely amazing how popular that video became. I'm going to include the link for it below in case you haven't seen it, but absolutely it remains one of more popular ones. So, as a dedication to that one, I wanted to go ahead and pick this one because it shares a lot of similar themes in some ways, and then at the same time it this new suggestion just brought in some more new items so it has to do with this it's basically the Japanese version of a mermaid and it's called the Ningyo and you're looking at a picture of it here now uh, when you think of a mermaid you think of certain automatic aspects this one though when I was reading the information it seems to differ in a lot of ways from what the Americanized version of a mermaid is so let's go ahead let's talk about all the fascinating information tied to this Ningyo cryptid so what is this particular cryptid well, it's a fish-like creature that's tied very heavily into Japanese folklore. I mean, it's one of those things where this is stories of this have been around for so long that it's just basically tied almost like a mythical creature. And the way that this thing operates, the way it works, it can either bring good luck or it can bring bad luck. But the same overall theme seems to be that it is very much a revered creature. So this thing, first let's talk about the uh, physical aspects of it. I was mentioning that in, uh, that it greatly differs from the Americanized version because uh, when you think of like a mermaid here in America, obviously like the tale of the little mermaid immediately makes you think that they're all humanoids up to pretty much the bottom half, like the top half up to their stomach and then the bottom one just being a large fin. But here, with regards to the Ningyo, it is literally, in most cases, like a fish-like creature. In fact, here's some descriptions of it. Before I mention this though, keep in mind that apparently these things are known to be shapeshifters as well. So, what I'm describing now could just be one version of it, and then if it decides to shapeshift into anything else, including the more Americanized version of a mermaid, then so be it. So for starters, it's very, very more fish-like than, let's say, human-like. Um, like, in this case, the top portion, instead of it being like a traditional human, it's much more fish-like. For example, it seems to have small teeth like a fish its face can resemble more of like a fish or in some cases also a monkey like it seems to have a monkey's mouth as well its entire body can be covered with these scales in some cases it being goldish or golden like scales and whenever it talks it seems to talk in a voice that resembles a flute I found that to be very interesting because imagine hearing something like this you could hear it from far away think that you're hearing a song, but in actuality, you are actually listening to the Ningyo basically translating or communicating with other uh, similar kind that are out there. And then other types of things that stand out, sometimes it has hair, other times it doesn't. When it does, it's supposed to be like a very full set of hair. Sometimes it has horns as well on its body. Those small teeth I was mentioning earlier and other occasions seem to be much larger. In this case, having, uh, in this case, like fangs listed on it. And then in the more extreme versions of this Ningyo, in some cases like the ones that are much more sinister-like, its features are considered far more quote unquote demonic, like this is not something that you want to come across. While in the other far spectrum, whenever I guess they shape shift into more beautiful creatures, they look just like uh, you would picture out of the Little Mermaid. Like in this case, uh, very beautiful women, um, half half women on top, half fish on the bottom, and in, in, the, in those situations, it's their version or their way of seducing or trying to get people to follow them to their destination. But that's pretty much it about so about the the uh, physical characteristics. You can see like there's a full gamut of this thing. Now as far as the mythological side 
Now, I was mentioning earlier that it's good luck or bad luck. Apparently, whenever you have the presence of a Ningyo, it's sometimes supposed to represent bad misfortune. Like in this case, uh, it can bring about storms. It can bring about unluckiness. It has to do more with the fact where if you see one and you try to capture it, because these things are again, supposed to be so revered, almost holy in a sense that in anybody considered a fisherman there in that area in Japan who purposely catches these creatures they're supposed to throw them back if they don't then they essentially bring about bad luck or misfortune or even in this case like sometimes really bad storms to the area also whenever you see a ningyo washed up on a beach like uh, like you would see like uh, some other fish how they're notorious uh, for committing suicide essentially jumping onto the uh, the land and basically beaching themselves. In this case, when you see a ningyo do this, it's supposed to be an omen of war. That's how extreme these thing these things can get. But in other cases, the ningyo is supposed to be more along the lines of something that's good, like good fortune. I guess it's because of their rarity uh, with regards to. Um, to people seeing them also they're supposed to foretell things whoever they appear to it could be good news in this case uh, there's a there's a particular Ningyo named Amabi who has said that every time she appears then it, she's able to tell people there that she will predict that they will have six years of good harvest so that's one aspect with regards to it and then I was mentioning of course the other one where if 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 if, if they are captured then that contains the lab bad things another interesting thing about the Ningyo is they also bring some good fortune to people if you can catch those pearls that come out of them. Apparently, if they cry, then when they, instead of turning out tears, they actually uh, dispel pearls, like fortune to pearls, like the stuff that comes that that can get very, very pricey, the stuff that can make people rich. So imagine that if you see the presence of a Ningyo, and for whatever reason they're crying after they leave, there's a good chance that you can find some pearls on 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 that location too. Now as far as another thing related to the Ningyo, it has to do with I guess the most interesting folk story tied to it. Maybe this was the origin of it altogether. It's called um, in the dialect Yao Bikuni but it basically translates to the 800 Buddhist priestess. So here's the story associated with it. It actually ties into the idea that you're never, like I was mentioning earlier, you're supposed to catch one and you're never supposed to eat one. Not like, let's say, you're eating another fish. Because believe it or not, if you catch these creatures and then eat them, they're supposed to bring very long uh, essentially a long life to you. I mean, we're talking hundreds of years of life, but there's the misfortune of having very bad storms and then having very bad luck during that time period. So it's almost like a good news, bad news situation. But this folklore ties into that because the way the story goes, there was a fisherman who was living there in an area called the Wakasa province. He accidentally uh, uh, captured what he called an unusual fish. Not knowing the stories of the Ningyo or the history tied to it he basically just kept it again completely oblivious to what he was not supposed to do and then he invited his friends over to to eat this fish and the way uh, he was doing it was in the kitchen this this Ningyo was already dead he was cooking it and then that's when one of his friends who came by saw what he was cooking realized that it was in actuality Ningyo and then advised him and the others not to eat it like he basically told him the story behind what he caught and then the misfortune and all the bad luck that comes to it afterward so the fishermen agreed absolutely you know they were not gonna uh, do anything with regards to it in terms of eating it they, they just pretty much just wrapped it all in some kind of paper and he took it home I guess so that way they could discard it afterward but one of the fishermen unfortunately that same evening he ended up getting drunk on some sake and when he did so he did not throw the fish away and took he in fact he took this thing this thing you know, this portion of it that he had wrapped in paper he took it home and that's when he saw his daughter there his daughter I guess she must have been a little bit spoiled or something because she was expecting some kind of present automatically from him and so uh, in his drunken state he gave her this wrapped up thing thinking uh, you know this could be 
be a good uh, idea of passing it as a present. She accepted it. She saw that it was a delicacy, in this case, some kind of a uh, very good fish. And so she decided to eat it. Unfortunately, this father realized he came to his senses. I guess the uh, alcohol was wearing off that, that he shouldn't have done that. But by then it was too late. She had finished everything on it. Realizing that there might be something bad that could happen afterward, he seemed to you know, monitor her, see if anything would happen. But no, uh, days passed by, then weeks, then months, finally years. Nothing really happened to her. In fact, she grew up and later on was married. And he was, of course, very happy at that point. But a strange thing happened afterward. After she was married and the years went by, her husband started to grow older, naturally, but she did not. She, in fact, kept the same youthful appearance that she had from the day she was married. And then finally, when whenever... Um, the first husband ended up dying and she was of course still very young and beautiful she ended up marrying again and then again and then I believe one more time and the same cycle happened every single time the husband ended up growing old just over the decades she ended up staying the same age and then uh, he, she, uh, she would essentially live a very very long life so much so that she became a nun afterward and then wandered throughout various parts of other countries until finally she decided to end her life apparently the way the story goes she came back to that Wakasa province and she took her own life at somewhere about the age of 800 but it all ties into this notion of this Ningyo that if you capture it and then you eat it yes apparently you will get a longer life but you'll have to suffer through the tragedies of it. Reading this reminded me of, of it's going to sound a little corny, but obviously in those X-Men movies, you have Wolverine, who has a very, very long life, has lived for hundreds of years. And in that last one, uh, what was it called? Old, not Old Man Logan, but the one before. I think it was just called uh, Logan. But in any case, that one, he was explaining that it's, it's not really a benefit. It's a curse because in his case, he gets to see people that he loves grow old and then and die away and it's just years and years of torture with that regard so it reminded me of that notion too but that's it that's all the info tied to this Ningyo this very very ancient folklore like creature that's found there in Japan anybody have any more info anything I might have missed uh, that'd be really great to hear your comments anybody have a chance of actually seeing one apparently these things are pretty rare again so hopefully maybe there's someone out there that has and again if you haven't had a chance check out my other video the in Jen, that'll be a great opportunity to see something that was uh, very popular it seems I made that video I remember just doing it I really paying too much attention to it afterward just thinking of it as like another interesting cryptid but not something that might last and then lo and behold it becomes one of my most popular videos of all so all right everybody thanks again as always take care